Welcome back YouTube, we have Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and today is a very exciting day for Pixel users because Google just released December 2020 security update with the feature drop we are waiting for for three months on all supported devices starting from the Pixel 3 up to the Pixel 5 and I have it here installed on all the Pixel devices I own I have the Pixel 3 XL, the Pixel 4 XL, the Pixel 4a and the Pixel 5 to show you all the new changes so let's see what's new with December security update but before getting started let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. I will start with the oldest Pixel model I have the Pixel 3 XL and now when you go to settings and then battery and then battery saver you will see a new option called extreme battery saver. We first saw this feature with the Pixel 5 and the Pixel 4a 5G and it's now available on the Pixel 3 and later. This feature should help you extend your battery life in extreme situations. And when you go inside, you will find two new options. And the first option we have is called when to use. And here you can set how this feature gets activated. And the first choice is called ask every time, which means every time you turn on the normal battery saver feature, it will ask you, would you like to activate the extreme one with it or not? The second choice is called always use, which means every time you activate the battery saver, it will be activated automatically with it. And finally, never use. The second option is called essential apps and here you can choose the most important apps to you. These apps will not be impacted by the extreme battery saver and they will function normally. And if you want to set any app as an essential app, all you need to do is to put a text sign next to the app name and you are good to go. But you will also find some apps already ticked and you will not be able to modify this because these apps are already essential for the phone to function like the camera app, the clock, the phone app and the messages app which makes perfect sense. But other than this any third party or first party app that's not essential for the phone to function you will be able to tick or untick. So now let's put it into action and see how it works. So now I will go back one step and then go to when to use and to make sure it's set to always use and by this every time I activate the battery saver feature the extreme one will be activated with it and then I will go back to the battery saver menu and tap on turn on now. And when I go back to the home screen, as you see here, all the apps are now paused except the ones that are set as essential. And that's exactly the same under the apps list. But what if you want to use any of these apps temporarily while using the extreme battery saver feature? All you need to do is to tap on the icon. You will get this message telling you it's better to keep the app paused to extend your battery life. But you can tap on unpause temporarily. And by this the app will work and when you go back to your apps list now the application is active. But this app will not be active all the time but after five minutes exactly you will get a notification like this one telling you that this app will be paused after one minute. And you can either choose wait until 12.50 a.m. which is another five minutes or don't pause app and by this the app will stay active even while using the extreme battery saver feature. But keep in mind when you tap on don't pause app this will not mark the app as essential. The next time you activate the feature this app will be paused again but if you want to set it as an essential app you have to do that yourself. So essentially this feature is not something new but Google is relying on the same pause app feature that we already have in Android when you tap and hold on any app you can pause it yourself. But the only difference here the extreme battery saver will pause all apps for you at once without you doing that manually. So that's the only benefit you get out of this feature. One more thing worth mentioning here, all paused apps will not receive any notifications. So if you used it with your Gmail or WhatsApp, don't expect any notifications to come. Next, the now playing feature. Now when you go to settings and then sound and vibration, scroll down to advanced and then go to now playing, then go to your now playing history. Now you can multi-select multiple songs in your history like this. You have more than one option. You can either tick uh, individual songs or you can tick the whole day like yesterday for example and do the same thing for all days. And after you do your selections, as you see here, there is a button at the top right corner. When you tap on it, it will give you the ability to add your selected songs to your YouTube music app. And when you tap on add to playlist, it will show you the list of playlists you have already in your uh, YouTube music. You can choose one of these or you can simply create a new playlist, give it a name and then set the privacy option. 
So let's try that and hit create. So now the songs are added to my YouTube music library under a playlist called test. So let's check that out. So as you see here, I have the test playlist include the 12 songs I selected from my now playing history. The now playing export feature is available on all pixel models eligible for this update. Next, a new feature called hold for me. This feature will allow your Google assistant to hold the line for you. And once a human being is back on the line, you will be notified to take over the call. This feature is available on all pixel models eligible for this update, but it only works in the US. Next, Google Photos and after installing this update and also update the app from the Play Store, you will get a new set of suggestions based on AI to enhance your photos. And the first one I'm gonna show you here is called Dynamic. So here's a normal photo and when I tap on the edit button, I will get a new suggestion called Dynamic. When I tap on it, it will enhance the colors, the brightness and the contrast of any image. So let me show you the difference. As you see, it looks much better with the dynamic suggestion. Not only this, but you will also get a group of suggestions made only for enhancing the sunset and sunrise photos. And let me show you how they look. I will search for a sunset photo in my gallery. And let's pick this one, for example. Tap on the edit button. And as you see here, I still have the dynamic one, but now I have a lot more to choose from. The, the first one I have is called Vivid, then Luminous, Radiant, Amber, Airy, Afterglow, and Stormy. These new suggestions only showed up on my Pixel 5. I couldn't get them on the 4XL, the 3XL, or the 4A. I don't know why, because there is no information on the Google website that says these new suggestions are exclusive to the Pixel 5 or the 4A 5G. Maybe they need some time to roll out to older Pixel models. One more feature you get with all Pixel models is the ability to share your phone screen while making a group call on Google Duo. I'm not going to be able to show you this in the video, but you can click the link I'm going to leave in the description below if you want to know more. Next, the improved screenshots speed, and this one is available for all Pixel models. As you see now, when I take a screenshot, it happens immediately. So there is no delay like before. So it's very responsive. Next, under display, now you will get the increased touch sensitivity toggle that we used to have only in the Pixel 4 series, but now it's available on the Pixel 4a and later. One more feature that I didn't get on any of my Pixel devices, which is Google Lens integration in the recent apps screen. So if you are viewing a website or using an app in any language other than your phone's language, you should get a suggestion from Google Lens to translate this website. The feature doesn't work on my phones. I'm trying here a Spanish website. I tried different websites, all phones, and none of them is working yet. So maybe in my follow-up video, if I spotted more changes, I will let you know about it. Next, the new styles and wallpapers app. And here I have the Pixel 3 XL updated to the latest version and the Pixel 4a not yet updated to show you side by side what are the differences in the styles and wallpapers app. And the first difference, once you open the styles and wallpapers app on both phones, as you see here, it looks totally different. The first thing you get on the new version is an actual look of your home screen with the icons, the widgets, and the wallpaper. While here on the Pixel 4a using the older version, Version, all you get is the home unlock screen wallpaper and when you tap on it it will show you the wallpaper only and you can also take the preview button to see it in full screen and that's pretty much it while here you get the actual representation of your home screen and when you swipe to the left you will also see how your lock screen will look like in reality and the second visual difference you get is in the categories as you see here the thumbnails are much smaller compared to the older version also when you go inside any category and instead of going to another page with the back button at the top left corner, here everything gets expanded in the same area with a small X at the bottom so you can go back one step. And when you try to set a wallpaper on both versions, you will get totally different behaviors. As you see here in the new version, I have two tabs at the top. One is called the home screen and the other one is called lock screen. Both of them will show me the actual lock screen and the home screens I will get after setting this wallpaper, including the widgets, the icons and everything. Similarly, under the lock screen, while here all you get is just 
a full screen of the wallpaper itself and you can also do the same thing by tapping on preview to get a full screen of the wallpaper without any icons or widgets also the info tab has been replaced by an info button and when you tap on it you will get the same information you see here in this area but in a different way you will also notice that i don't have anything related to the customized tab here on my pixel 3 xl but that's always the case with the pixel 3 xl now I will swap to the Pixel 4 XL to show you how it differs in the two versions. So as you see here on the Pixel 4 XL, the customized tab has been replaced by a button. And when I tap on it, I can change the colors of the wallpaper, which is the exact same thing on the older version, but they look different. And finally, the delete button has been moved from the top right corner towards the bottom. And when you try to set a static wallpaper in the new version, like for example, this one, here you can pinch to zoom to change the size of your wallpaper and also change the position and that will apply also to the lock screen. Uh, you can do the same thing in the older version but you will not be able to see uh, your actual home screen and how it will look like or your lock screen. Also in the new version you get this full screen button and when you tap on it the wallpaper doesn't move anywhere and when you tap on it again you can move it so if you want to lock the movement you can tap on this button so that's pretty much it under the wallpapers tab now let's go to the style tab as you see here both look totally different and the first difference is in the preview area as you see here in the new version you will get only one page to show you everything about your current style including the icon shape the font the quick settings color and the quick settings icons style while here you will get separate pages for each one when you swipe to the left you will get one for the font one for the icon the color and the shape so it's a lot cleaner in the new design also in the older version when you go to the first page and tap on it that will take you straight away to the editing screen of your current style while here it will show you a bigger preview of your current style and you cannot do anything from here all you have is the tick and x buttons the x will take you back to the previous page and the tick button will take you to the home screen without doing anything the only difference here is the information button that will show you all the styles you are choosing uh, for this current one there is also a difference in scrolling as you see here in the new version you can scroll between your styles vertically while here in the older version you can scroll horizontally also the add button in the newer version is the first button you get while here it's the last one in the list now let's try to add a style to see the differences here you will get four different fonts to choose from while here you have seven next you have the icons here you have also four different icon styles while here you have also seven next you have the color here you have diff 14 different colors to choose from while here you have only eight and finally the icon shapes are exactly the same so that's pretty much it under the style tab let's see what else you get here there is a new grid tab that doesn't exist in the older version so let's see how it works and this new tab will allow you to change the grid size of your icons in the home screen here you have four by four you have three by three and two by two and as you see here you get an actual representation of how your home screen will look like and also i found that changing your grid size and returning back to your original one will not mess up your icons everything will be back to its original position one more thing i found under the styles and the wallpapers app a new category called the mandalorian this category showed up while filming this video and when you go inside you will find five different wallpapers to choose from these new wallpapers will be available on all pixel models eligible for this update google will also push more wallpapers under the arts and culture categories but they didn't roll out yet next adaptive charging and this feature is only available on the pixel 4 4a 4a 5g and the pixel 5 this feature will dynamically change the charging speed based on your alarm so for example if you set your alarm at 9 a.m the phone will charge slowly and it will reach 100% only at 9 a.m. 
and this feature will help your battery to last longer. But I couldn't find anything under settings that can allow me to modify this feature so it works automatically. Now let's talk about the exclusive features to the Pixel 5 and the Pixel 4a 5G and the first one is under adaptive battery. This feature will help the phone understand if you are likely to miss your next charge and it will save more power automatically. The feature is based on AI and machine learning to understand your behaviors and routines and act accordingly. Next, adaptive connectivity. And this feature you can locate under network and internet, advanced, and you will see a new menu item called adaptive connectivity. This feature will allow the phone to switch between 4G and 5G based on your usage to save your battery life. So if you are only browsing the web and sending text messages, the phone will stay on 4G. And once you do heavy stuff like downloading uh, large files or streaming media, the phone will switch automatically to 5G. Next, adaptive sound. And this feature can be found under settings, sound and vibration, and you will see a new item here called adaptive sound. This feature will simply adjust your phone equalizer to make your speakers sound the best based on your surroundings. The feature will simply use your microphone to assess the environment around you and give you the best listening experience from your phone speakers. But there are a couple of things you need to keep in mind. It says here in the description, adaptive sound may be less noticeable at higher volumes. All microphone audio is deleted shortly after it's recorded. It's processed locally and never leaves your device. Finally, audio and the background conversations are never sent to Google. So that will give you a peace of mind if you want to use this feature. I didn't try it myself. I'm not sure if it's going to make a big difference, but I'm going to keep you updated about my experience. There is also a new app only available for the Pixel 5 and the 4a 5G called the Mandalorian AR Experience. This app can be downloaded from Google Play Store, but you will not be able to see it unless you are using a Pixel 5 or a Pixel 4a 5G. I didn't play around with the app yet, but I'm going to keep you updated about what you can do with this app. So let's give it a quick trial here while filming the video. This is my first time to try it, so I'm not sure exactly what it does. Let's go. So I actually failed to set the phone the right way while filming the video because it shouldn't be used that way. It shouldn't be tabletop, but it should be used like this. And I need to step away from that table. But for now, I will uh, ignore it and maybe create a separate video about it or give you an update about what it does exactly. One more feature exclusive to the Pixel 5 and the 4a 5G. This feature will enhance your GPS accuracy because the phone will use something called 3D mapping to better identify your location. So if you want to know more about how it works, I'm going to leave a link in the description from 9 to 5 Google that will give you detailed explanation of how it works. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the changes I managed to spot in December 2020 feature drop for Pixel devices. If I found any more changes, I will create a follow-up video to keep you updated with the changes. But for now, I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.